All right, guys, I'm back with my creepy head again. Um, I figured I would do a really quick video um, summing up some of the common ways that I will oftentimes close holes in models. Um, you can see I've just taken my head that I've been using, uh, and I literally just sort of somewhat randomly deleted faces in it. Um, so in this case, um, I'll just I'll start with the inner eye because I can. Um, so a lot of times when I am doing something like this inner eye in here, um, there's going to be eyes in front of that. I don't really care what this looks like. I just want it to be closed. Um, so in this case, um, usually what I'll do is just do extrude, um, scale this in slightly, um, hit G to extrude again, and then do a merge to center. Um, and it will totally make like a bunch of tries in the back of your model, but like for the most part, it doesn't super matter to me because again, there's stuff in front of here, so it doesn't really matter all that much. Um, uh, let me make a quick note to myself. Um, and something else. All right, cool. Um, all right, yeah, so that's how I usually fill holes if I don't care what they look like. Um, so again, I'll just do that over here. Um, you can also just extrude it and just do a merge to center without adding the extra extrude. It's kind of fine. They do basically the same thing, just to give you a harder line at the end. Um, you can see this one's more rounded, um, and this one's harder because I added that extra extrude in there. Um, so again, it doesn't really matter which one you do. Um, so that's usually how I fill the back of eyeballs. Um, if you just have something like this in here where I basically just accidentally deleted an edge loop so you can see like over here on this side um, it's basically just one edge loop that runs around like this um, and I just deleted that by accident I say accident um, but <laughs> it was very intentional um, so I'll just do for that I'll just select the inner and outer edges uh, go to edit mesh and bridge um, and theoretically, um, since they have the same number of edge loops, um, it should bridge that fine. If I wanted to, I could go back and add more divisions. If I wanted like a really awkwardly hard eyebrow crease, it's kind of cool looking. I don't hate it. Um, for stuff like this, um, where it's just a single hole, uh, most of the time I will just go and append polygon that. So I'll just go mesh tools, append polygon, um, click on one of the empty edges, and then just click across the other edge. Hit enter, and then you have that nice polygon back in there. Um, and then for areas like this, um, it's pretty much just like, it looks like just a few edge loops that have been deleted in a row, and then one that's down here. So what I'm going to do is just close this up with the pen to polygon tool. Um, and then I should, theoretically, highly theoretically, um, be able to bridge this back together. Have very low faith this will actually work. Um, yeah, so it yelled at me because I don't have the same number of faces. Um, so in this case, I'm trying to match the geometry over here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, go back to my pen to polygon tool. Um, I'll close up. I'll add in like this little square back in here. Um, and then I will go in. Okay, so now it's bridgeable if I want it to be bridgeable. Um, or I just have the, the right edge loop selected. Um, so I'll just select these top uh, top edges here, top uh, lower edges down here, and go to Edit Mesh, Bridge. Um, and then you can also fill single polys with the bridge tool as well. It just seems like a little bit of overkill. I don't know. Um, for areas like this, where I've just sort of decimated a large portion of my model, I'll come back to that in a sec. Um, so here's another example of the bridge tool. Um, but let's just say... Uh, I wanted to bridge this edge to this edge. Um, so what I could do, um, you'll notice now, once that I've activated the bridge, um, there's like a little hole in my mesh um, in here. And there's an edge loop right here that kind of stops at this new geometry and then also down here. So what I can do to compensate, just add a single division in my uh, in this bridge that I made. Uh, and then I still need to close this hole. So I'm going to grab this vert. Um, Press and hold V to activate vertex snapping. You can access it from the buttons up here. Uh, and I'll just snap that to up here. And grab this other one. And snap it to the vert down here. Um, so right now, um, theoretically that should be... It looks closed, right? If I smooth it, um, you can see that there's this weird pulling here. And a lot of times I will use the smooth tool to uh, sort of 
uh, see if there's issues with my geometry. So in this case, for the rest of the model, like on the back here, you can see all of the squares are pretty much, they have nice like 90 degree angles, they're straight lines. Um, but up here by this bridge that I just made, um, the lines sort of pull in. Um, and this is a sign that there's something wrong with my geometry. Um, in this case, I know that it's um, just these vertices are not connected together. Um, so like if I grab one, you can see there's still a hole in my mesh. Um, so I'll grab these two verts. Um, I just marquee selected over them, click and drag, um, and then I'll merge to center. And you can see as soon as I do that, the lines smooth out. Um, so I'll just do that again down here, making sure to not select anything on the other side of my model. Um, if I did and I did a merge to center, it's going to make make bads and pull the stuff in. Um, yeah, merge to center is <laughs> does not discriminate <laughs> about what you want to do. Um, uh, so again, so for this hole here, um, it probably makes more sense rather than patching it like I just did. Just bridge these top two and these bottom two, edit mesh, bridge those guys together, and then you have the geometry you need. You don't need to like splice things together all crazy. Um, on the inside of this nose, um, so ideally I'd try to replicate this on the other side of my mesh. Um, so I will, uh, and you see I have, I have one, two, three edges, and then one, two, so I, I kind of have to do, I have to do, actually, I guess I could, I could do this. Uh, <laughs> it's just, it's um, not great for topology, because if you look at this, so like right now, if I were to, if I were to in, insert an edge loop tool, say, on this side of the face, it's going to run... Uh, probably not going to work because I deleted half the stuff out of my mesh. But like if I wanted to insert an edge loop here, you can see it goes straight up and down the face. It's like a fairly logical layout um, in terms of where the edge loop is going. If I leave the topology in here like I have it for that bridge, um, when I insert an edge loop, so okay, so like over here, actually that's also a bad example, but um, so if I leave this like it is right now, if I try to edge loop, add an edge loop in here in this nose, you can see that it's done this ridiculous thing where it's wrapped around the nose like four times and then just sort of come down randomly in the mouth. Um, this is a really good example of like why you want to pay attention to your edge flow and how things work. And it's a good idea to keep things sort of a square sort of checkerboard grid like it is in here where you just have a straight line of quads coming down, a straight line of quads here, like straight line of quads. Because um, as soon as you start like making things all diagonal and crazy like this, um, it becomes incredibly hard to control where you're adding edge loops, which makes it really hard to do anything. Um, and it's a lot easier to mess up and end up with like weird end gons and horrible geometry. And it's just, it's really hard to work with and stuff like this. Like if you add an edge loop and it just like shoots across your entire model seven times, you're just like, I hate everything right now. Um, so I'm going to undo that. And then I will just come back through here, um, get rid of these faces and actually match the geometry in here, in this other side of the nostril. Um, so what I'm going to do is just uh, select these uh, these three edges here, these three edges here, do an edit mesh bridge. Um, and then same thing as I did on the back of the neck. I'm just going to add this little subdivision in here. Um, snap these verts together. Um, and then merge them to the center. Um, and then I'm just going to be lazy and just merge those to the center, whatever. Um, so you can see now that if I try to insert an edge loop tool... Um, it's just gonna it's gonna put one straight line going up and down the face. It ends up in the ear, but everything ends up in the ear. Um, so it's like one edge loop goes straight up and down the face. It doesn't wrap around the nose 80 bajillion times, and that's kind of the more ideal what you'd want to see for topology there. Um, and then sometimes like so like something like this area in here. Um, again, it's the same thing. You're just gonna have to bridge it, um, add a division, and then you can merge. Uh, merge these verts back together. Um, you can see I was not paying attention and I merged it with something on the back. Um, so pay attention <laughs> and don't do that. Um, all right, so I'll just merge these guys um, and then merge these guys. Um, and you can see if I smooth this now, the shape... Ah, all right, I'm not going to lie, that's actually not terrible. I was going to be like, yeah, the shape of the nose is really off. You need to go back and fix it. Um, you probably should. It's definitely not a symmetrical model anymore, but like sometimes when you bridge, you might need to come back in and like modify the uh, the vertice placement a little bit just so you can get like a closer shape maybe to what's on the other side. But this actually did a reasonably not terrible job. 
Um, I am suitably impressed. Um, so up here, a lot of times, again, I'll just half the time I'm too lazy to use the bridge tool, and I'd rather just click on a pen polygon once, hit G, and then just like fill this whole thing with a pen to polygon. Um, and I could do the same thing back here, and it's just like boom, wah, boom, cool. Um, single holes, I pretty much always use a pen polygon tool because I think it's easy. Um, and then for something like this monstrosity down here, um, if you if you absolutely had to reconstruct this, you totally could. Um, what the probably simplest solution would be is to just chop your model in half, um, like this, um, and you should see the pivot should still be in the center of the object when you do that. So if I duplicate this and scale it uh, negative one on the either Y or Z, it usually end up as it's usually the Y or the Z. You need to scale negative one. Um, it'll make a duplicate an exact duplicate of your model. Um, just zero that out. You can go to mesh, uh, combine. So these objects are now one piece. Um, you will notice if you do mesh combine, um, it'll, it'll add these like two groups in here with the transforms under them. If I delete either of those, it's going to get rid of half my model. Um, to fix that, just do alt shift D or go to edit, delete by type and history. Um, you'll notice if you do, there's no drop down for these anymore. So like the little transform node is gone. So you can now delete these and it doesn't affect your model at all. Um, so that's just a thing to be aware of. Um, so like right now, this looks like a nice connected mesh. Um, the top of the head seems to smooth pretty well. Um, you'll notice like in the neck, um, again, there is that like weird pulling in here. So like if you look at this model smoothed, um, oh, um, so you'll see that this uh, this neck here, where it's the vertices are actually connected, it's like a smooth line, whereas this one comes down to a really aggressive point here. Um, again, that's telling me that the vertices are not connected to each other. Um, so what I'm going to need to do in this case, um, and if I, I can actually go back and select any of these edges and be like, look, there's giant holes in my mesh. Um, so what I'll do, um, instead of having to go through and manually like click on every single little set of vertices and like merge it to center and merge it to center and merge it to center and merge it to center. Cause like you do not want to do that. If you have like a really dense model, you don't want to do that 50 times. It's a colossal pain. Um, but there's a tool for that. Um, if you go into edit mesh and merge, um, pull this up. It should bring down this little drop down here. Um, and basically what this tool does, Ooh, ooh I can make the font bigger. I literally never tried that before. Interesting. Um, anyway, <laughs> um, so what this does is basically kind of works like the merge to center tool, uh, except instead of doing whatever you have selected, it's, um, pretty much we'll look at whatever vertices you have that are within this distance threshold of each other. Um, and it'll merge those to center. It basically does like a bunch of different merge to center commands, but you'll notice, um, so like once I ran that, you'll notice that actually, let me. Let me do a bad example before I show you a good example. So if I have this, right, um, I will do mesh, merge, um, and you'll, you might have noticed that like when I hit the merge button, um, I'll do it again. Um, so I undid, I'll hit G to redo the command. So G, um, you'll notice that this snaps up. Um, these vertices here have been merged because they are closer than 0 0.0001 by units from each other. Um, the higher up you make this distance threshold, the more stuff it will smush together. Um, this is legitimately terrifying. Holy actual crap. <sighs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna screenshot this and then have nightmares about it forever. Um, anyway, so you'll notice that like when I set this to point two, um, it grabs a lot of the stuff on the eyes. Um, because you can see that geometry is pretty pretty close together, like especially in this inner eye here. So we'll like totally grab those and just suck them into each other. Um, if you bump it up high enough, you can literally pretty much collapse the entire model. Um, it's a little little spazzy and aggressive that way sometimes. Um, so that's the merge tool. Um, it works really well if you need to like duplicate your model in half or do something like I just did. Um, so in this case, I'm just gonna grab these two guys. Um, I put these put that in the wrong spot, didn't I? Um, and I'll just grab this and vert snap it to the other, the vertice I originally moved it away from. 
Um, and again, you'll see since these are not connected, um, there is this sort of hard creasy line here. Um, you do get this here. These are like these guys here are connected. Um, it's just the shape of the the topology doing this because of the the shape of the quad. Um, but like right here, like these aren't connected. There's only two of them. I'm just gonna like merge them to center. Um, if you do use the merge tool, um, just be aware that like if sometimes like if you have really stuff like in here in the eyes, if stuff is really close together enough, um, sometimes the merge tool will grab it and merge it together and kind of like destroy our topology if you're not paying attention. Um, I mostly use it just for seaming objects together like this, because um, it's the the best quote unquote guarantee you have of having something, uh, or like having vertices that are really 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 close together. So you can use a really low threshold that's probably won't affect the rest of your model as much. Um, so that's like ideally how I'd patch that hole was just duplicate the mesh. Now the entire side is. Uh, it's symmetrical again. I would only have to basically fix one side of my model, like the theoretically the least broken side. Um, if I did want to actually fix this, um, probably what I would end up doing is just going through and just systematically sort of bridging stuff together, like add a bridge, add a division. Um, I'll do a append uh, for this guy here. Um, maybe grab, like it's it's just sort of like patch it the best way that you can. Um, so in this case, I'm just going through and adding bridges wherever I can. I'm using append to polygon. Um, so like now I have like this area I could sort of bridge here. So I do one, two, three. Um, I'll bridge that. Um, and then this area is uh, full again, so I can do this, and then I'll just add a division. Um, you can see it actually puts the division in the really, really stupid spot. So I might add, I'll add like three divisions, that gets me a little closer, and then I can just go through here uh, and control delete those edges. Now at least this is just sort of closer to where it should be. Um, so if I smooth this, I can go back in and see all of the areas that need to be attached back together. Um, so I'll just go through and probably just merge to center these guys, since I didn't, didn't even try to get these vertices anywhere close, and I'm too lazy to snap these for the purposes of the demo. <laughs> um, so I'm just going to go through, again, um, finding like this area here where like the verts are clearly clipping through each other. Um, and then it's patched. Um, theoretically, like, especially some of the areas like right here, I'd probably have to go in and like modify um, the, the positioning of my vertices a little bit more. Um, but yeah, I mean, some of it is like literally just sort of brute force the geometry in. Um, if it's something like the back of the head, which is like really obnoxious, like if I were to, you know, just go through and be like, delete random geometry in the face and the head. If you had like some, oh god, wow. Um, this, perhaps don't even try to patch it. It's just not worth it. Um, I don't know. But like, I mean, if it's something like this, you just, you still just have to keep going through and just like tweaking stuff. Um, if you, if you butcher your mesh badly enough, it's probably easier to just go back to a previous version, depending. Like, if I if I did actually do this to my mesh, and there was, like, half of this, like, eye here missing, or, like, you know, something awful like this, I'd just be like, what other version do I have of this model? But, anywho, that's usually how I patch holes, um, with just append to polygon, bridge, or extrude, and then merge to center, um, for stuff like the eyes, or, like, I did that also on the bottom of the model. Um, so... Yeah, hopefully that was kind of helpful, maybe.